Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. Well, uh, all right. I mean, see what happens. Gora's Vengeance Phage. <laughs> yeah? What do you got? I mean, if they kill Torpor, we die. Hello, everyone. It's Seth. Probably better known as Saffron Olive. And it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So last week, we had another I Win and Moderate Against Odds poll. And the winning card is a card that I actually can't believe has never been the winning Against Odds card before. It seems like such an Against Odds card. That is Phage the Untouchable. So we did play Phage like five years ago in this Endless Whispers deck. But that was an Endless Whispers deck, not a Phage deck. This this is the Phage deck. We are all in on try to win with Phage, hopefully not kill ourselves with Phage, as quickly as possible in a deck I'm calling Phage's Vengeance. So let's talk about this deck, jump right into the game. So of course, our namesake card, the winning card, Phage the Untouchable, one of the most unique creatures in all of Magic's history. So Phage, 7 mana 4-4. Four, four. The downside is, when it comes into play, if you did cast it from your hand, you lose the game. So you can't really cheat Phage into play normally, or else you just kill yourself. The upside is, Phage has, like, Death Touch, essentially, on creatures. More importantly, it has Death Touch on players. If Phage can deal combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. So the plan of our deck is to get Phage into play, not for 7 mana. We're working around the Enter the Battlefield drawback. Get it into play, get in one attack on our opponent, hit our opponent, make them lose the game on the spot, maybe as early as turn three with our best draw. So how are we actually cheating Phage into play without dying to the Enter the Battlefield trigger? Well, step one to winning with Phage in our deck is stifling the Enter the Battlefield trigger. For this, we have Torpor Orb and Tikali on your guard, just two mana cards that make it so Enter the Battlefield triggers don't trigger. So with either of these cards on the battlefield, we can put Phage into play any way we want to and be able to win the game. So that is step one. Step two to our deck is get Phage, not in our hand, but into our graveyard, because our graveyard is where we're gonna cheat Phage into play. For this, we have a ton of options. Cathartic Reunion, Insult Neonate, just let us discard Phage, draw new cards. Lightning Axe can kill something and discard a Phage. Key to the City is actually awesome in this deck. Uh, the two mana artifact lets you discard a card to make up to one creature unblocked and then you can draw cards when it comes untapped for two mana. So this means we can use it to discard Phage, and then once we get Phage into play, we can make Phage unblockable, which is great, because one of the problems with cheating Phage into play is it could just get chump block forever. Key of the City makes sure that does not happen. We also have a couple of Stinkweed Imps just to discard to our other stuff, and then we can dredge. If we can't find a Phage, we can dredge a bunch of cards with, like, Cathartic Reunion. Hopefully find our Phage so we can cheat it into play and win the game. So how are we getting Phage onto the battlefield and win in the game, and uh, since Phage only needs to connect a single time with our opponent to cause that player to lose the game. So essentially, one hit in Phage allows us to win the game. We have a bunch of reanimation. Most of it, though, only puts Phage into play for one turn. So the vengeance of our deck is Gorio's Vengeance, just for two mana, reanimating and giving haste to a legendary creature like Phage the Untouchable. So this is how we have our nut draw in the deck, like something like Insolent Neonate on turn one to discard Phage, turn two, Torpor Orb, or to Kali on our guard, turn three, Gorio's Vengeance, get back the phage, hit our opponent with that attack, game over on turn three, which is absolutely insane. So that's our best reanimation spell, best way to cheat phage into play. We also have Whip of Erebos, a little bit slower, Kenrith, also a legendary creature, so we can reanimate it with Gorio's Vengeance, but it also can reanimate phage, and Kenrith, another way to give phage evasion with its trample and haste ability for one red mana, so another way to get through blockers, which is one of the concerns. We can do all this work with, like, uh, getting phage in the graveyard, getting down a Torpor Orb, reanimating Phage, only to have our opponent jump block it, and since Gorio's Vengeance and Whip of Erebos exile the creature at the end of turn, if we don't get in that one attack, uh, we lose our Phage forever. So the evasion is actually really key to the Phage combo kill. So that's the main plan of the deck. As far as the mana base, Shizu Death Storehouse is another way to make uh, Phage evasive. For one mana, we can tap it and give a legendary creature fear, so as long as our opponent doesn't have black creatures, we get to smash our opponent with the Phage, make sure we can win even even through blockers, so joining up with like Key to the City to give us a lot of evasion, Gaia Reach, more looting, bunch of mana fixing lands. In the sideboard, Wear Tear, probably the most important card, a way to get rid of artifact or enchantment based graveyard eight, which would be really good against our deck because we don't want to cast Phage for seven mana. That's just super, super slow. So Graveyard Eight shuts out our deck, Wear Tear gets rid of it, bunch of removal, some discard, damping sphere for cost.
Cabo, Soul Guide Land for Graveyard Axe, Blood Moon, just a one of because <laughs> mostly for the memes. I know whenever I build it against odds, I can put Blood Moon in the sideboard. There's always comments like, Ugh, Blood Moon in your four color deck, what are you doing? So now I'm just going to put it in every deck. And fingers crossed, I don't know if we'll ever sideboard it in, but we might, and it could even be good. Anyway. That is Phage's Vengeance. That's our against odds deck for this week. Let's jump into our games, see how it works. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And right now, you can get this sweet scoop soldier sticker when you order over at cardkingdom.com. Just mention in your order notes that you want a scoop soldier sticker when you go to check out. All right. Against odds time. We are phaging in modern, and uh, this hand is reasonable. Uh-oh, burn. All right, so we're going to have to uh, not just win, but win quickly. Bona hits us. We need a phage. We need a phage. Sacred Foundry tapped. Whip of Erebos. The lifelink could be relevant here, and it's more reanimation. Oh, more swift spears. Oh, dear. Yeah, burn on the play's tough. About it. Suspense or... Wow, lagging like crazy. All right, so we will play a swamp. I think we just cathartic reunion. Hmm. Actually, we probably got to kill a swift spear. All right. Yeah, I guess we should play an untap land. Ugh. I want a cathartic reunion and try to get things set up, but I think we got to wait another turn. Let's just pass. We can pass lightning axe a swift spear. Hmm. And then go from there, I guess. All right. Rift bolt down to 14. Bloodstained mire. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks. So lightning axe. Kill a Swift Spear, discard Gorio's Vengeance. Drop to 12. Opponent passes. Now play to Kotli on our guard. Hopefully we're not turning on a Searing Blaze. Play a Bloodstained Mire past the turn. Opponent on taps. No Searing Blaze yet, at least. Opponent cracks. Mountain. Oh, there is a Searing Blaze. All right. Searing Blaze down to nine. Plays a land. Hits us down to seven. Ooh, that's not much life. Not much life at all. Down to seven. Opponent passes. Well, crack blood stain mire down to six. Get a godless shrine tapped. Untap. Well, guy reach sanitarium. Whip of Erebos. Oh, we need our opponent to have like two lands in hand. Pass the turn. Untaps. Light up the stage to draw cards into. Ooh, mountain and light up the stage. All right. Opponent gets in, hits us. Down to four. Land. Light up the stage. We need some whiffin'. That's a bolt. All right. That means we can't play Kenrith. Yeah. Discard. Discard. Draw some cards. I don't think we can draw into anything that saves us here, though. Yeah. All right. Well... We were close to stabilizing. Well, we can bring in Collector Brutality. We can go down a Stinkweed Imp and run it like that. Well, we get to play first. Well, okay. I mean, we will keep this. We can discard Phage. We don't have a Torpor Orb. All right, opponent just suspends a Rift Bolt. Interesting. Well, get a Triome. Untap. I'll play the land. Tecatli on our guard. The pieces are kind of coming together, although unfortunately Tecatli on our guard is likely to die against Burn. It could die to Rift Bolt right now. Rift Bolt going face. Opponent could also be setting up for Chandra's Incinerator, which Lightning Axe cannot quite kill. Eidolon, okay. Opponent, pass it. Oh my goodness, we're so close. Blood Crypt tapped. Pass the turn. Well, I mean, we got a shot. This is very close to the nut draw we needed. Opponent. Wooded Foothills. We would prefer our opponent to tap out. Oh, not gonna tap out. Rift Bolt suspended. Yeah, we can't go for it, because if they kill Tecatli Honor Guard, we just lose. And our opponent's gonna see it coming. All right, untap. Pass the turn. Opponent. Rift Bolt. Yeah, Tecatli Honor Guard's kinda weak in this matchup, because there's just so many, so many Lightning Bolts. All right, so opponent's gonna kill our Tecatli Honor Guard. I guess that's not a shock. Combat. Attacks, well, we will. Lightning Axe, discarding Phage, kill it. Well, Eidolon down. Opponent passes. Land, maybe? Tap land. Well, we will play Insolent Neonate. Untap land would have been really nice because we could have got down this whip and start gaining life. Play the land, pass the turn. Opponent bolts our face, down to 11. 
Bold start face down to eight. Craig's wooded foothills. Wow, we were really close. There's just so much risk with uh, things going wrong with Phage. Bonet, four cards in hand still. Has not been playing lands. Okay, there's a land. Lava spikes us to five. All right, we're down to five. We untap. We play Whip of Erebos. Go to combat. Get in for one to gain some life. Has Rakdos charm, so we don't gain life. All right. Well, sure. Opponent to 13. Untaps. Passes. Well, we draw. Phage. Well, we will play Whip of Erebos. Go to combat. Attack with Whip of Erebos. Gain a life. If we can survive, we can discard this Kenrith and gain five. Own it. Shard Volley. Well, this is it. Do they top deck three damage this turn? If not, I think we can win. Goblin Guide. That's only two damage. That's not lethal. Opponent combat. Hits us. Top card is a Kenrith. Okay. So we go to one. We untap. Insolent Neonate. Discard Kenrith. Draw a card. Whip back Kenrith. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! All right. <laughs> well, I was uh, not expecting Fairy Macabre. Wow. All right. Well, surprise, surprise. Got us. Ouch. Well, next time. Ugh. So close, Vage. So close. All right. Against the odds time, we are phaging in modern. And no phage, but this hand's reasonable-ish. We got ways to fill the graveyard. We got the Gorio's Vengeance. We got the Tikatli's Honor Guard of Loot. We do need white mana. But that's a lot of what we want to, uh, to have a shot. Opponent, Swamp, and Thought Seize. Sure. Well, I assume our opponent takes Gorio's Vengeance. Opponent did do some mulliganing. And kept a Thought Seize on the mulligan. Not many cards in hand. Oh, uh, booted. Takes the Gorio's Vengeance. And passes. Well, we will Black Cleave Glyphs. And Insolent Neonate. Go. Opponent. Swamp. And Collective Brutality. I don't really know what our opponent's doing, honestly. Maybe some sort of 8-rack style deck? Takes our Lightning Axe. That's a lot of discard to keep on the mulligan. Opponent, passing. Oh, play Arid Mesa. Crack Arid Mesa. Grab a Plains and get down to Kali on our guard. Pass the turn. Uh, yeah. Well, get in for one pass the turn. Opponent, down to 17. And down to two cards in hand. Uh, boot it. Field of Ruin. All right, blows up like Leaf Glyphs, sure. We will take a Swamp. Oh, Forest, all right. And Nile. huh, all right. I don't know what our opponent's doing. <laughs> well, we will go to combat. We will attack you down to 15. I guess for now we're just on the janky beatdown plan. About it, yeah, down to 15. To Catley Honor Guard Part 2, Black Leaf Glyphs. Pass the turn. Another land for our opponent. They do get a redraw from Spellbomb at some point. Liliana. Sure. Takes it up. Well, we'll discard Torpor Orb. Opponent passing. I'll go to combat. Attack Liliana. Down to one. Uh, boot it. Untaps. Draws. So we do want to get rid of the Liliana. Fatal push on the uh, Tikali on our guard. All right. Takes up Liliana. We discard Whip of Erebos. Opponent passing. <laughs> Torpor Orb. We wouldn't mind just drawing a land, honestly. But go to combat. Attack Liliana. Opponent going to Desperation Crack Spell Bomb. Hoping to luck into a removal spell. All right, Liliana down. We will discard Torpor Orb. Sag Neonate, draw a card. Phage. All right. Well, we got the big stuff. Boy, we could use a way. We could use, like, Cathartic Reunion would be insane here. Opponent plays a land. Any way to draw through our deck is great. Well, play the Swamp. I guess just hitting our land drops gets us to Kenrith eventually. Like, one more land and we can just cast Kenrith, which would be good. Hit our opponent. Opponent. All right. Top deck the Fatal Push. Well, come on, land for Kenrith. That is the next step in the puzzle. Opponent. Passing. Land off the top. Untap variety. Gorio's Vengeance. All right. Well, pass the turn. Opponent has a draw step stop set for 
no very apparent reason. Opponent adepts. We did lose a lot of Torpor Orbs. Uh-oh. Kitchen Fangs. Okay. Well, play the Torpor Orb. Pass the turn. Oh, we're actually, like, kind of close. About it. Combat. It's us down to 16. And Utopia Sprawl. Could be some sort of a uh, Death Cloud deck. Well, I mean, we're going to go for it. Lightning Axe. Your Kitchen Finks discard Phage. Oh no, it comes back into play. Oh. Uh, yeah, this doesn't work. Our opponent can block. Oh my goodness. No. All right, pass the turn. Yeah, the blocking is a problem. If our opponent attacks this turn, then we got it. We did still need to discard the Phage, so opponent gets in with Kitchen Finks. No fear. Well, uh, all right. I mean, see what happens. Gore's Vengeance Phage. <laughs> yeah? What do you got? I mean, if they kill Torpor, we die. Oh, no! <laughs> wow! All right. Well, sure. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, that is uh, that is the risk of Phage. <laughs> Oh, uh, fair enough, fair enough. Well, run it back. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Now, opponent had the right card at the right time. That is for sure. We unfortunately did not draw land. A land would have been just spectacular. Like, just being able to play this Kenrith would have been probably just won us the game on its own. But, I mean, we got to the point of phaging. The bad news is our opponent just is one of those decks that has the exact right spells they need to have a chance of interacting with us, which... Yeah, most decks do not in the main deck, but our opponent's uh, our opponent's deck is one of the ones that does. And they have main deck graveyard hate. This is probably actually just like miserable matchup for what we're trying to do. Main deck graveyard hate, infinite discard, and ways to blow up our torpor orbs. That is uh, not exactly what you're hoping for in a matchup. All right, we get to play first, and uh, I mean we will keep it. All right, opponent figures out what they're doing. We will play a blood grip. Pass the turn. Well, here comes the discard, I presume. Opponent untaps. Overgrown Tomb. Untapped. Utopia Sprawl. Sure. On black. Opponent passes. You know, play a land, and we will Cathartic Reunion. Discard Phage and Stinkweed Imp. No dredging. Draw some cards. Pass the turn. Uh, boot it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, this is this is almost a hilarious. Yeah, sometimes, like you can't even get mad when stuff like that happens. You just gotta laugh. Like it's just a a matchup where <laughs> it's just a matchup where opponents playing a a bunch of stuff that that is not played in really any deck, but it happens to just line up perfectly with our deck. <laughs> Main deck Niles Bow Bombs, main deck Bajuka Bogs, a bunch of removal that can kill Torpor effects. <laughs> this is just, this is just, I, our opponent's got to be thrilled. I mean, probably most people that run into Phaedra are thrilled, but opponent's got to be thrilled. They're like, wow. <laughs> Every one of our cards is a 10 out of 10 somehow in this matchup. About it. Wow. More you. Now I, what a weird, just absolutely weird, 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 weird matchup. Uh, somehow, our last game, our opponent had six basic lands and no dual lands. Jeez, um. And then, uh, this game, our opponent has, is throwing Utopia Sprawls aggressively in Overgrown Tombs and would absolutely just lose to a, a Blood Moon, but, all right. Well, yeah, this is, uh, this is not looking, not looking good. We will discard a Lightning Axe, untap. Oh, we almost had him game one, too. Top deck Arena. Well, we will, uh, draw an extra card. Play a Bloodstained Mire. Crack a Bloodstained Mire. Yeah, I mean, once our opponent casts Death Cloud, we will, uh, we will concede. We will play a Insulin Unit. Pass the turn. A Powder to Taps. Plays a Field of Ruin. Sure. Field of Ruin's one of our lands. Yeah, that is acceptable. We will grab a Plains. Actually, let's grab a Swamp. We don't really need the Plains yet. Opponent gets a Forest. Has... Ridiculous amounts of mana available. We will discard a insulin unit. Untap. Draw an extra card. Ugh, boy. Cannot get away from these lightning axes, I guess. Get in, hit ya. 
Mana would be good. We would not mind that. Attack for one. I think we're going to sack this Neonate. We really need to start hitting land drops. Discard Lightning Axe, which is pretty bad. Land, maybe? New. No. All right, pass the turn. About it untaps. Tree Top Village. Passing. Well, we will key to the city. Discard a key to the city. Untap. Draw an extra card. The problem is we're on a death cloud clock, and once that happens, it's just game over. So that is that is a, a big part of the issue we're facing here. Tagali on our guard go. We did find a land finally. Bone it. Undeps. Treetop village. Okay. Lots of black mana being flowed at home. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Another Vulminator Mage. Blows up a land again. Wow! Alright, pwn it, passing. Well, key to the city. Discard key to the city. Untap. Draw an extra card so we can maybe hit a land drop. All right, we find a Bloodstained Mire. Play Bloodstained Mire. Go to combat, get in, attack you. Well, actually, we can't attack. Pass the turn. Ooh, opponent's out of two cards, but we are not making any progress towards actually winning this game at the moment. Swamp for our opponent. Kalitas, Trader of Get. And Treetop Village. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks. Well, we will Lightning Axe the Kalitas. Discard a Kenrith. Crack Bloodstain Mire. Oh, no white mana. Get a tap land. Discard Kenrith. Drop to 10, but there's two treetop villages that we can't really deal with. Oh, and we have no. Our opponent managed to blow up every white source in our entire deck. Draw a card. Cathartic Reunion. Discard Whip of Erebos and Phage. Draw some cards. Pass the turn. Well, all right, this is it. This is the entire game wrapped up into a turn. Opponent untaps. We have Phage of the Graveyard. Opponent has one card in hand. Unfortunately, if we had... <laughs> if we had another White Source, we would win. Because we could play another Tikali on our guard, and we would be sure to win. Unfortunately... Our opponent has managed to fulminate every white source. Uh, and also Field of Ruin. So here comes our opponent. Well, I mean, it's all going to come down to what this one card in our opponent's hand is. If it can kill Tikali on our guard, the game is over. In their favor. If it can't, then we win with then we win with Phage. Opponent hits us to four. Yeah. Well, here we go. About it. Passes. Yeah. I mean, this is it. Gore's Vengeance. Phage. And... Oh, wow. <laughs> well, live by the phage, die by the phage. So obviously that was not a win. Obviously we lost. However, wow. I feel like, uh, I feel like we should have. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that our opponent I can't believe how that played. I, I, I can't believe it. Their land destruction actually won them that game. And in game one, they top decked. They had, what, two turns? And they had to top deck the abrupt decay when they were empty-handed, and they did. Wow. All right. Well, I guess the good news is we were really close to the Phage win. Jeez. Eh, next time. Next time, next time. All right. Against the odds time, we are trying to uh, <laughs> uh, get Phage's vengeance. On the modern format, uh, Fade's the Untouchable this week, and this hand's okay. I mean, we got the Phage. We got a way to get in the graveyard. We have uh, ways to keep it from killing us. Not bad. All right, opponent passes. We will play a Triome. Pass the turn. Opponent cracks. Blood Crypt. Tapped. Opponent on depths. Verdant Catacombs. Cracks Verdant Catacombs. Gets a forest. Renin 6. Alright. Well, that's not ideal. So, opponent gets to draw extra cards every turn. Not a big fan of that. Um, well, we will Arid Mesa, crack it, grab a mountain, cathartic reunion, discard phage, discard sacred foundry. Draw some cards. Well, okay, there's Gorio's Vengeance. I mean, this hand has potential. It has been we got the Goreo's Vengeance. We got the Phage in the Graveyard. We'll see. Pony could have, like, Scavenger Goose. They could also have Discard. They are playing Jund. So there there are ways that this goes horribly wrong. There's also ways this goes horribly right, though. Horribly right? 
wonderfully right. <laughs> About it. Can keep drawing cards with red its eggs. Gets back the land. Plays the land. Plays the Tarmogoyf. Passes. Well, we will play a Torpor Orb. And a Bloodstained Mire. Well, we'll see. Pass the turn. Ugh, we don't have a way to make our Phage unblockable at the moment. And I'm still very scared about discard. But opponent cracks, gets an overgrown tomb. Untaps. And our opponent's also a deck that could have Assassin's Trophies or other hard removal that can actually kill the Phage. Oh, we got a shot, though. We got a shot. Vote it. Oh, Liliana. Okay, please attack us. Please attack us. Please attack us. Gets back the land. Ticks up. Uh, we will discard a Tecatlion or guard. I mean, if our opponent attacks us, there's a chance we just win. Bloodstained Mire. Does our opponent sniff it out? Oh, they do. All right. Crack Bloodstained Mire. Get a Godless Shrine. So now we need another piece. Oh, like Lightning Axe. Lightning Axe. We're going for it. We are going for it. Lightning Axe. Lightning Axe Tarmogoyf. Discard to Kotleon or Guard. Is this happening? Is this really happening? Gorio's Vengeance. Phage. Coast is clear. Is Modern Jun not actually good enough to beat Phage the Untouchable? Is that where we're at in this world? Is that where we're at? <laughs> oh, what's worse? What's worse? What's worse for Modern Jun? It can't beat a standard deck or it can't beat Phage. <laughs> oh, I mean, that was a that was a good draw. A fortunate draw that saved our day. But we got him. We just got him. We got Jund. We just straight up got Jund. Uh, that was pretty impressive. We'll go down a Tecatli on our guard. We'll go up to Blood Moon. And, huh, do we want to do anything else? Yeah, run it back. Run it back like that. Wow! <laughs> we jundid them out pretty spectacularly. All right, we are on the draw, and, well, I mean, I guess we keep this. Oh, if our Cathartic Reunion gets Thought Seize, this goes way worse. But Cathartic Reunion discard two phages is good. Oh, dear. Okay, so this hand has gotten a lot worse suddenly. <laughs> that was the risk of keeping this hand, that if we lose Cathartic Reunion, it doesn't do much of anything. Eh, okay, Key to the City is actually good. That's actually very good. That is a replacement for Cathartic Reunion, sort of. Bloodstained Mire for our opponent. Cracks it. And technically, Kenrith can reanimate Phage over on Tomb Untap down to 17. And Renin 6 again. Sure. Well, it gets back to land. I'll play a Plains. Play Key to the City. Pass the turn. Uh, it. Bloodstained Mire. Crags it. And Seasoned Pyromancer. Gonna draw some cards. And Liliana Inquisition. Well, we will... Oh, pwn it thinking getting back to land okay well we will discard a phage untap draw an extra card play a bloodstained mire past the turn opponent untaps we found our blood moon our one of that could actually be good we'll see see how far behind we are and what our opponent can do here Clothis, okay. That's actually huge for our opponent, because that helps with the Blood Moon, too. Hmm. Raging Ravine. So that's going to keep our opponent in green mana, and keep our graveyard empty. So, okay. So I think how we have to do this. We definitely have to play Blood Moon. Opponent's going to ping us with Ren and Six. We definitely have to play Blood Moon, and then we have to hope that we can... That we can get to... Uh, grab a Swamp. We have to, so we have to Blood Moon, and then we have to try to get down Kenrith to stay alive. So we drop to 15. Oh, if they didn't have this Clothis, I'd feel really good about the Blood Moon. Cathartic Reunion. Well, we will play the Swamp, play Blood Moon. Pass the turn. Hope that we draw into a land to just hard cast Kenrith. So opponent hits us to 13, eating our Phage. I guess our opponent only has one real mana, don't they? Hmm. 
There's only one land in the graveyard, so that actually helps. Wow, can we stabilize? Opponent pings us to 12. Hits us to 9. So land for Kenrith is our best draw. Oh, they have a forest. Ew, phage. Well, let's Cathartic Reunion. Discard two phages. Bloodstained Mire. Tecatli Honor Guard. Insolent Neonate. Pass the turd. Ooh, are we gonna be just fast enough or just too slow? Opponent untaps. We drop to seven. Yeah, eats a phage. Seven's not a lot. Uh, put it. Combat. Attacks, attacks, attacks. Huh, so not afraid of the phage? Well, we will block and block. Sack neonate, discard key to the city. Draw honor guard. Drop to six. Five, four, three. This does put us dead to bolt. Pings to Kotli Honor Guard. Another Renin six. Pings to Kotli Honor Guard. Yeah. Well, if we draw Gorio's Vengeance, we win, I think. Aired Mesa. Well, one, two, three, four, five. Kenrith. Aired Mesa, go. The question is, are we dead here? We go to four, we go to three from Ren and six, we go to two from the token. So if our opponent has any source of damage, we're dead. Otherwise, we'd start gaining five a turn with this Kenrith. And that'll keep us out of the danger zone for a minute at least. Well, we'll see. Four cards in hand. It's a phage. Yeah, down to four. As close as has been insane for our opponent. Uh, booted. Well, they haven't killed us yet, so that's good news. Takes up Renin 6. Verdant Catacombs. Opponent passes. So it's 3 to gain life? Um, do we want to discard Honor Guard? We're not going to cast it this turn. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, let's do it. Discard Honor Guard. Untap. Draw an extra card. Ooh! Alright, well, we will gain 5. Up to 9. Go to combat. Oh, I really want to kill this Ren and Six. If they had Lightning Bolt, we are dead. So let's attack Ren and Six. Ren and Six down. Okay. Pass the turn. Potent. Gets to keep eating stuff. We're down a lot of phages. Three. But if we find another one, we have the full combo at a, in one turn to get around this Clofus. Potent. Combat. Hits us. Down to four. Passes. Well, we will play Torpor Orb, gain five, and um, yeah, let's just pass. Pass the turn. Bow it. Clovis. Gonna eat Tikali Honor Guard. I mean, we're staying alive. We are staying alive. Combat. Opponent. No attacks. Well, we will discard Kenrith. Untap. Draw an extra card. Play Black Cleave Cliffs. <sighs> no attacks. Gain five. Up to 12 past the turn. Opponent. Clothis. Eats Kenrith. Okay. Down to 10. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Blood Braid. Spins it to wins it. Please don't kill our Kenrith. Nile Spellbomb. All right. That's fine. That is not. I mean, that does mean it's going to be really hard to. To win with... Oh, how are we going to win this? It's going to make it very difficult to win with... Hmm. With Phage. Opponent. Passes. Well, we will discard a Torpor Orb. Untap. Draw an extra card. Play the land. Pass the turn. Oh, this also gets our opponent close to turning on Clothis, which is not great. Yeah, the amount of Graveyard Hate's becoming a problem. Like, this Kenrith is keeping us alive, but I'm not sure how we actually kill our opponent from here. I mean, I guess with... Hmm. Do we want to reanimate that or just keep gaining life? Yeah, let's reanimate Neonate. I guess, actually, with two Gorio's Vengeances... Okay, there goes a, there goes a Spell Bomb. All right. I mean, that's relatively okay. So there goes some of the Graveyard Hate. That did cost us a turn of gaining life. We need to find... Uh-oh. Oh, they found the goif. Yeah, that's bad. That's real bad. Oh, we gotta find the last... We gotta find the last phage. And we gotta find it soon. Opponent, big attack. Well, we will kill Season Pyromancer to turn off Clothis. 
We drop to five. We draw Neonate. Well, let's gain some life. Up to ten. Play a Neonate. Pass the turn. About it. Makes a couple Pyromancer tokens. Yeah. Oh, we are just barely holding on. Opponent. Ren and six is us to eight. No, well, Exile's Ren and six. Plays a mountain. Goes to combat. Passes. Well, discard Agoria's Vengeance. Untap. Draw an extra card. Now, Lightning X is not bad. That's actually pretty decent. Well, we will gain five, back up to 13. What a weird, weird game. Pass the turn. <laughs> Opponent. Untaps. It's Goryo's Vengeance. We go back to 11. Oh, black mana. Thought sees. Well, in that case, we need to Lightning Axe the Tarmogoyf. Discarding Torpor Orb. Discard, unfortunately, Goryo's Vengeance, because we're losing it anyway. Opponent Thought Seizes. Down to 30. Goes to combat. Passes. We get to draw an extra card. Hmm. How do we do this? Well, I guess we just gain some life. Back up to 16. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. <laughs> what a weird, weird, weird way for this game to play out. Going to eat a Tarmogoyf. We go to 14. Opponent goes to combat. Passes. Well, we will key to the city. Discard the land. Untap. Draw an extra card. Key to the city's been doing some work. Well, play Shizu. Play Whip of Erebos. Um, yeah. Gain life. Pass the turn. Opponent. Untaps. I mean, we're all the way back up to 19, which is good. That is not bad. It's the Gorio's Vengeance. And Whip of Erebos does give us a reanimation spell. Opponent. Getting in. Uh, okay. I assume that means our opponent has a lightning bolt. And we don't want to lose our Kenrith to a Lightning Bolt, so... Down to 14. Key to the city. Maybe we should start uh, attacking with Kenrith, I think. We can start keying to the city during our turn just to make Kenrith unblockable. That seems wise. I think we're going to start doing that. Because we don't want to block with it here. Whip of Erebos. Well, we will key to the city. Discard the land. Target Kenrith. Go to combat. Attack our opponent. Gain some life. To 19 past the turn. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's our plan. Kenrith beat down until we find the phage. Opponent untaps. Or until our opponent finds an answer to Kenrith. Then things, then things get a lot worse. We just don't have many creatures left if our opponent can find, like, an assassin's trophy or something. Opponent. Goes after Neonate. Well, one, two, three, four, four, five. Uh, four, five. Reanimate Neonate. <clears throat> All right, opponent fizzles it. No removal for Kedrith, please. Opponent, combat. Attacks, 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 attacks. All right, just the tokens. Sure, we will take it. Down to 16. Opponent passes. Well, we get to draw an extra card with key to the city. We will discard Whip of Erebos. Make Kenrith unblockable. Go to combat. Attack our opponent. No, menace. Menace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's not legal. Phone it. Take seven. Okay. Well, we will play Stinkweed Imp. Wow, this is the jankiest plan of all time. Pass the turn, but it's kind of working-ish. Phone it. Ooh, they have Assassin's Trophy. All right. Well, we will gain life. Kenrith down. Grab the mountain. Pass the turn. All right, opponent eats the Kenrith, gains some life, plays a land, bolts Stinkweed Imp, hits us, okay, down to 20, opponent passes. Well, we will pay, dredge Stinkweed. Well, there's our last Phage. Well, Whip of Erebos, Phage? Combat? Attack you? Phage you? <laughs> wow! That was a weird one, but
but the phage came through in the end. Oh my goodness, what a match. We just comboed him in game one. Game two, that was that was turn 17. That was the longest, slowest, grindiest game. But in the end, our phage came through. Wow. All right. <laughs> Oh, I mostly put the one Blood Moon in the sideboard for a meme because people are always like, eh, Blood Moon in your four color deck. Why are you playing Blood Moon? So I mostly did it as a joke, but it actually <laughs> was really good there. <laughs> oh, sweet, sweet. Sweet, sweet. All right. Against the odds time, we are playing some Phage's Vengeance. And, well, all right. We will keep this. We need to hit a land, but we have Torpor Orb. We have ways to discard Phages and dig through our deck. Yeah, I mean, seems reasonable. So we need Phage and we need Reanimation. Those are those are the next steps. So let's play in some Neonate. Pass the turn. Also, just a land would be sweet. Oh, uh, potent. Bloodstained Mire. And passing. Land? All right, there's a land. So play the land and play Torpor Orb. Well, combo piece number one. So now we need Phage in the Graveyard, Reanimation in hand, and we potentially just win? We even have unblockability with Key to the City. Well, go to combat. Hit you 4-1. Pass the turn. Torpor Orb can just randomly get some decks, too. We'll see. See what our opponent's playing. If it's like Jun, then. Uh, okay. Or Death Shadow. Then it probably doesn't really care. Opponent Thought Scours. Mills, eh, nothing too relevant. Uh, opponent. Inquisition of Kozlek. Sure. Taste Lightning Axe. And, ooh, stuck on one land. All right. And more Lightning Axe. Well, we will play... Cathartic Reunion. Discard, discard. Hmm. Draw not a whole lot of anything. Get in, hit ya. Bloodstained Mire, go. Ugh, thought seize, okay. Takes Cathartic Reunion. And passing. Well, Bloodstained Mire, crack it. Get a Godless Shrine. Thin the deck. Untap. Ooh, there's Phage. Well, play Tikali Honor Guard. Play a Swamp. Get in with the Neonate. I mean, there is, there is hope. There is hope. That's a Phage in hand. That means if we can draw a Gorio's Vengeance or some other reanimation, we can potentially just win immediately on the spot. All right, Grimag Angler. That does make things a little harder as a blocker. Opponent passes. We draw Neonate. Well, play Neonate. Get in with Neonate. Hit ya. Down to... No, 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 no. It has Menace. It has Menace, Grimag Angler. Nope, nope, still Menace. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, still, yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> Found it down to 11, we passed the turn. Cycle Street Wraith down to 9. Thought Scours. Mills, two lands they probably wanted. Opponent. Passing. Hmm. Grimmag Angler on defense does make this harder. Since we don't have unblockability at the moment. Opponent, discarding to hand size. We draw land, I'll go to combat. Hit you down to seven. Arid Mesa go. Uh, opponent. I assume Death Shadow is going to be coming pretty soon. Yeah. All right. Opponent hits us. We take it. Down to 14. So opponent must uh, must have a Death Shadow. Fatal pushes a Neonate. All right. Well, we will. Let's see. Uh, Cracker Arid Mesa. I mean, this is our window. This is our window. We will get the Blood Crypt tap. Neonate. Discard Phage. Come on. Come on. Cathartic Reunion. That's a minute away from being good. We untap. Vengeance. Vengeance. Come on. <gasps> yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Gorio's Vengeance. Phage. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, please tell me there's not a force negation. Please tell me there's no force negation. Yes. Yes. The phage kill. <laughs> oh, I mean, it took our opponent being stuck on uh, <laughs> on one land, but we got him. We got him. We phaged him good. Uh, all right. So 
Opponents playing Death Shadow. We'll bring in a Blood Moon. Uh, and that is, I guess, pretty much it. Go up a Blood Moon. Go down a Tikotli Honor Guard. Run it like that. Well, that's Phage Kill. That is a Phage Kill. It is possible to Phage someone. <laughs> I don't know if it's uh, likely, but it's possible. That was proved. Uh, all right, sure. I mean, I assume our opponent's going to pick our hand apart with Discard, which means Torpor probably doesn't resolve, but otherwise, we got Discard, we got the Phage. Cycle Street Wraith. All right, no Discard. We'll take it. Well, Trium, go. Opponent Thought Scours, ew. They might have a turn to you something. You're a Meg Angler? Alright, there's a the land. Oh, now they can play Death Shadow or Gurmeg Angler. Hmm. Yeah, this is a much faster start for our opponent. Down to 12. Gurmeg Angler. And, an, oh boy, double trouble. Alright. Uh, that's tough. Now play a land, play... Key to the City. Pass the turn. We're still going to need ugh, multiple turns, even if we run well. A little scary. Opponent. Thought Scours, Mills. Ooh, Surgical. We don't really want to see Surgical. That's a blowout waiting to happen. An opponent's got a fast clock. Plays a Swamp. Thought Seizes. Grows Death Shadow. So how can we win this? To have a chance... I think we just have to draw Gorio's Vengeance, like this turn, and have our opponent not have anything to ruin our day. Opponent hits us down to 8, or 4 8, down to 12. We will play a Torpor Orb. Blood Crypt tapped. All right. Well, do we live one more turn? Can we top deck Gorio's Vengeance? Ugh. We might not even live one more turn. Inquisition, sure. Combat. Yup. So, we will. Key to the city. Discard phage. Untap. Draw an extra card. Kenrith. Well, alright. I mean, we gotta go for it. We'll see if our opponent has an answer. Gorio's Vengeance, phage. Oh! Wait, Snapcaster? Oh, Snapcaster Surgical! Oh, all right. Yeah, well, on one hand, we didn't win. On the other hand, our opponent had an insane start. They had turned to Grimag Angler Death Shadow, and they needed Snapcaster Surgical to not be dead. So even though that was not a win... Oh, I am the worst player in the history of Magic. I am the worst player. 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 I am Oh my god, that putt. Oh, I'm gonna get so yelled at. You probably already yelled at me several times. I think that might be the worst putt I have ever made in my entire history of magic, which is saying something because I'm the guy that pithy needles his own pithy needle. I've had many, many putts, but that one was especially brutal. Just forgetting that the torpor orb would stop the snapcaster mage from getting the surgical extraction. Basically, we were 100% to win that game in that match against Grux's Death Shadow. Literally 100%. Like, all we had to do was nothing, and then the phage comes into play, we can make it unblockable. Key to the city, the game is over, we win. But, uh, for some reason, my brain stopped working momentarily. Uh, we conceded, and then, of course, shape scoops the entire game. So, overall... Uh, we had four matches on video. I played five overall with the deck. Technically, we were one in four. There was one match that I didn't include in the video. It was this match against uh, Wurza, and it was very long and boring, and we did lose, uh, but I didn't inc not include it because we lost. I didn't include it because I thought it was a really boring match. Basically, what happened is we had Torpor Orbs, so our opponent couldn't combo off with Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meek, but our opponent had main deck Graveyard Hate, so we couldn't do anything. So the game just went on for a 
really long time until our opponent eventually got an Urza and just would tap all of their artifacts to cast free spells, eventually played a bunch of random artifacts, eventually would sack those artifacts one at a time extremely fairly to Thopter Foundry to make one ones and then I'd like turn a million, finally killed us with one one. So uh, we didn't win. It wasn't especially entertaining though. So overall, that would mean our record was one in four with Phage's Vengeance, although asterisk 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 the deck deserves better one of those losses purely on me we already talked about it so if i didn't have that mind-blowing punt we would have been two and three and one of our other losses against the green black i assume death cloud deck even though we didn't see death cloud was our opponent having the assassin's trophies or abrupt decays twice when we were trying to reanimate phage and then us died to phages enter the battlefield trigger or they would blow up our torpor orb to cali or whatever and then we die to our own phage so we got to see the good and the bad and the hilarious and the puns there was a little bit of everything this week with our phage gets on so the good news is we did get wins with phage and phage is actually a pretty fast clock like we did get some really powerful quick wins given Giving phage evasion, reanimating it can be really powerful. We occasionally wreck people with Torpor Orb. We occasionally wreck ourselves by forgetting about Torpor Orb, uh, as we saw against that Snapcaster. So the deck was the deck was sweet. Obviously, I don't think Phage is like a super competitive modern card, but if you really think about how the matches played out, we easily could have went two and three, and with a little bit more luck against the Green Black deck, our opponent not always having the abrupt decay or assassin's trophy off the top to make us die to our own phage, we could even at three and two so i think it's better than the record suggested regardless wow stuff happened lots of interesting things happened judd i can't even beat a phage poor judd poor richard uh what a ridiculous week of against on so hopefully you enjoyed the insanity of phage's vengeance Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.